Uh, my name is Dave Zuckelboim. I'm uh, owner of Ziggy Soccer Inc. Doing business as Soccer Locker Miami. I'm here with Nick Powell. Thanks for coming. Glad to be here. Just got a few questions for you today. Okay, let's do it. What made you decide to open up your own business? Well, it was uh, it was an interesting thing. I was a uh, soccer player, and my family were all soccer players, and my brother actually um, was a professional soccer player, and I was still in school, and he actually walked into a soccer store in Fort Lauderdale, and the old gentleman there was offering franchises, and my brother called me and he said, Dave, let's open up a soccer store. And it was simple as that. You know, a guy offered a franchise and we decided to, to jump on it. And what was the inspiration for that? Well, I guess the inspiration, I don't know if there was an inspiration. I think it was more the fact that we were soccer players um, and we got an opportunity to get into the business, uh, the retail business of soccer. So it kind of went hand in hand, just uh, like I said, we kind of fell into it and the fact that we were, we loved the game and uh, we got the opportunity to open up a retail store. And when you decided to initially open up your own business, how much time, money, and planning did it take before you eventually opened it? Um, it didn't take long. Um, I think we started, let's say October, I think October 1981, started looking at, for locations. By November, uh, we had all the paperwork filed. We, uh, we had an attorney, a friend of my father's, helped us draw up all the paperwork. And uh, by December, we opened the store. So it didn't take very long. And where did you start advertising really your business? Um, you know, in those days, um, it's you know it was all grassroots. I mean, I would literally go to all the soccer tournaments, um, the schools, any soccer event. I mean, I was I was peddling soccer stuff. You know, I would take a, my car and and show up with a pop up tent, and uh, little by little as the, the the business grew and you know I obtained more capital, then I started advertising in you know. Not even in the Miami Herald has been the Ford to, but you know, local little papers. Um, you know, this is pre-internet, mm -hmm. pre. Uh, so it was everything was print pretty much. Um, and how much did you spend on advertising? Um, again, that varied. Um, basically, it was all based on my cash flow. It, it, you know, I literally month to month to see how much excess money I had. I would kind of, I never really established a budget for advertising. It was more a, uh, as the opportunities came, as people walked into the store mm -hmm. and said, hey, listen, we have a flyer, um, we have a newspaper, we have a, a program, we have a, a school yearbook, those types of things, I would just make the decision right there if I had the money to, to advertise. Mm -hmm. And you have a website for your company? Yeah, we, uh, we, we established a website early, early on before the, the, the explosion, the internet explosion. And that was interesting. That was a, a customer of mine that was a, a computer tech, a guy that um, was an IT guy. Mm -hmm. And it, at the start of the internet, he kind of came in and he goes, Dave, you've got a great name, Soccer Locker. Why don't you register it online? I said, well, what the, you know, what the hell does that mean? And he goes, you know, SoccerLocker.com. And he looked it up, and it was available. And, uh, and if it wasn't, his name is Jeff Kersner. I still know the guy. And he actually started the website, and it was just an information piece. And then as the years progressed, then we got the program, um, you know, the shopping cart, and then we just started selling products online. But the, the, my online business is, is only about 5% of my business, even today. You know, it's it's not a big part of my business because I have a uh, a brick and mortar store. I'm not really an online retailer, even though I do sell online. What uh, what people do is they go online and they see the product and then they come into the store to buy it. Yeah. But I am shipping all over the country. But the, the online business is very competitive. Everybody's giving everything away, and you know I'm not giving the product away. Yeah. So. And do you have an employee who maintains? website or do you maintain 
Yeah, we have. Uh, I have a webmaster that uh, he take he takes all the pictures. We we do our own photography, so he takes all the pictures, uploads all the information, all the descriptions, and then I have uh, a kid that downloads the orders, answers the emails, and packs the boxes and ships it. So really, it's a two guys. You know, that's why it's kind of it's not that big of a business. You know? It only needs two guys. And how do you use social media to promote your business? Uh, social media, the, the, my web guy is in charge of that. Uh, you know, we do Twitter. We do, um, you can tell I'm an old guy here. Facebook. Uh, Facebook. So we have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter following. Mm -hmm. um, we need to uh, do a better job for that. You know, so yeah, but I think you might have an Instagram. And I think, yeah, we have an Instagram. Yeah, yeah, Instagram. So, yeah so we, we have all three. How do you select potential employees that you trust? Um, I've been fortunate where I've had a ton of employees. Um, I've only had to fire one or two in the whole time that I've had the business. It, they, they come and go. They're all family members. As I was telling you earlier, I have... Uh, Two sets of brothers, uh, two sets of cousins. Uh, it, it, it's like a family, you know. One guy says, "Hey, I have a, a, a sister that needs a job, and if I need somebody, I'd rather hire somebody that you know and trust. That I know, that I trust him. So his sister, I would imagine, has the same values, mm -hmm. you know. So I hire the sister. Um, we don't have like on on the you know it, it's all pretty much on the job training. I don't have a, a syllabus. I don't. I'm kind of loose as far as that's concerned, but it's worked out. Do you offer any of your employees incentives? Yeah, we um, at the end of the year, if if the business is profitable, I have a a program that's called straight profit sharing. That that at the end of the year, when we when we finish the books, if I have if the business shows a profit. I'm able to take part of the profit and disperse it to everybody. So everybody at the end of the year gets a bonus that goes into a um, into uh, you know into securities. <coughs> you know we have uh, how do I say it? You know with Raymond James and Kovac Securities. You know we invest in mutual funds. Mm -hmm. Everything is uh, low risk, low yielding okay. because you know so we invest. You know, we give it to a couple guys to invest, and everybody almost like a four hundred one k, like a four hundred one k, four hundred one k that the employee contributes, mm -hmm. and then the employer contributes to that. Mm -hmm. Me, on the other hand, I just give at the end of the year. They don't have to contribute anything. I'm just putting money in and count for that. Okay. And owning your own business does it affect your family, or how how does it impact your family? Um. I tell you what, the retail business is a very time consuming. Um, we're open seven days a week. Um, so I leave early in the morning. I leave at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I get home at seven, so I'm putting in a lot of hours. I would say it, it's, uh, it's tough on the family. Luckily, I have a beautiful family and we haven't had any issues, but um, I had to. St I, I used to work on weekends, and I stopped working on weekends. Once I started having kids, I wanted to see my kids, so I see my kids basically on the weekends. But during the week, it's kind of just uh, you know, 15 minutes in the morning for breakfast, and a couple hours at night before they go to bed, and boom, back at work the next day. So retail is very, very time consuming. Well, having kids, what plan do you have for succession of your business? Um, I, I currently have a, a son at, at Florida State. Uh, he's second years. Um, I'm hoping once he gets out and goes out into the job market and sees how tough it is to, to find work, maybe he'll come to the store. I'm not going to force him to do it. Mm -hmm. you know. Hopefully he takes an interest in it. This past summer he worked uh, during the World Cup and he got in the mix and he was ringing people up and he, he saw the excitement of it. Um, We'll just have to see, and and if he doesn't, you know, I have a daughter, but I'm not sure she would be interested. Um, I have two daughters, um, so the exit strategy may be within 10 to 15 years, I'll just sell the business, and uh, since I bought the building, maybe I'll sell the business and maintain the building uh, as a rental income for my retirement.
So we'll, we'll have to see. And before starting your own business, what professional background did you have? Well, the, the crazy thing is that uh, I was a student. I was in my last semester at James Madison University, and that's when my brother Shane called me. I was graduating December 1981. He called me November 81. So the decision was made when I was still in school. And when I graduated in December, I literally drove home, and that Monday, I was in a store. So I started working, so I had I had no profession before it. I, I was a student. Yes, I had a ton of jobs. You know, I was a waiter, you know, a, a driving range, uh, park cars, you know, what everybody does as, as a teenager. But um, the day I graduated, I, I, I got into the retail business, you know. And you've been in the business for so long. What makes you feel like your business is a success? Um... My business is a success, I think, and not, not that I think, that I know, because I have taken little steps. In other words, this thing has been 33 years in the making, so my business has just been going like this. Straight up, straight up. Uh, 2008, with the crash of the market, uh, and when things were tough, you know, it leveled off, but things have been going this way. Um, Slow, slow growth is the key, you know, and slow growth gave me the, the, the I, I would say, it gave me a, a, a base, um, a, a security that, you know, as you build customers and, 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 and you, you, your inventory builds, but just little by little, that way there's low risk of going out of business. The guys that try to make it fast, those are the guys that go out of business fast. So I, I would say slow growth and all the time, all the, all the time that I've spent at the business. It's not run by manager. I mean, I do have managers, but I'm there every single day. And I think that's what the success is also, that uh, it, it's run by the owner, like a good restaurant. The, the owner has to be there. If not, it's, uh, you'll, you'll fail, you know. Um, what kind of advice could you give someone trying to take the same path that you did? Um, again, you have to come up with a good idea, and, and these days it's probably tough. The, the retail business right now is, is tough, and I think that's due to the internet. Um, so to give somebody, the, the, to start a retail business in today's world, I think is much harder than it was in, in 1980 because the internet now has created, you, you can't compete with the internet. And I, I find that in my business as well, where consumers now um, are, they, they already come in with a, they, they already know what the price of a good is. Mm -hmm. So you either give them the same price that's on the internet, and if not, you're gonna lose the customer. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's trying to start a retail business right now, I, I, I think it would be a very big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, because of the internet, um, because that's just instant competition. In the 80s, 90s, you worry about the other soccer stores or sports authority, or you know, uh, you, well, other retailers. Competition, now, yeah. competition, but now it's it's the world that you're competing against. Mm -hmm. So the, to, to find a niche, I think it's a lot harder. And I, I I feel sorry for the kids that are coming out of school now trying to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a big challenge. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Okay. I appreciate it. Great talking with you. Yeah. Let me know if there's anything else you, you need. I will. Thanks a lot. All righty.